Hello once again. I'm Matt Forrest Essenwine. It's another edition of Wit and Wordplay, and uh, with you know, with all the the craziness going on uh, during this uh, COVID nineteen business, remote learning and homeschooling and everything, you know, it, the kids might be wondering what else they can do. There's only so many games you can play inside. Uh, granted, you know, it's great to be outside if you can get some fresh air, but when you're inside and you can't go to a lot of places, you know, there's only so many games, there's only so many puzzles, there's so many, only so many pictures you can draw. Uh, so I thought I would share a, a little poetry thing that might be a good, uh, a good activity for, for parents to do with their kids. And, and educators, this might be a, a good idea for the kids to do um, for a, a remote learning um, exercise in poetry. It's something called ekphrastic poetry. Now, that's a really big, fancy word for poetry inspired by art. That's pretty much what it is. Uh, ekphrastic poetry is a poem that has been uh, written not only inspired by art, but to sort of go along with it. You see, maybe it's a piece of art. It could be uh, simply a photograph, um, but it would be a poem that you write that goes kind of along with that. Uh, a good example of ekphrastic poetry is a children's poetry anthology. I say it's a children's poetry anthology. That was how it was marketed, but it's an, a poetry anthology for everybody called World Make Way. Uh, the late Lee Bennett Hopkins uh, put this together a couple of years ago. If you can find it, it's a great book. I have a number of friends and, and colleagues who uh, contributed to it, and it gives you a good idea of what it means to to take a, a picture and write a poem that, that, again, isn't just inspired by the picture, but it it, it goes along with the picture. It uh, maybe reveals something that the picture doesn't reveal. Uh, but it's, they're just made to kind of go together. So that's ekphrastic poetry. And the reason why it's a good activity for, for kids and parents is because the kids can draw the picture uh, and then the, the parent might write a few lines to go along with the picture. Or if you've got siblings, one of them likes to write, one of them likes to draw. One could draw the picture, the other could write a, a short little poem that goes along with it. Or uh, parents could take a photo and the kids could write a poem based on the photo. So I'm going to share a couple of examples just to, to give you uh, an idea. This first one was written by my daughter who was, uh, let's see, 2015. So she was... Yeah, she was only about two, two and a half at the time. And this was a hand picking up rocks, she told me. And, and I checked with her a couple of weeks later. I, I, you know, when your kid is two years old and they're drawing pictures and you ask them what it is, I'm figuring she's just you know, making up a story to tell. And, and that was what it was. So I thought, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if that's really what it is. So I hid it away. Two weeks later, I pulled this picture out and I asked her. Again, she's only about two, two and a half. I said, oh, you know what? I forgot. What is this picture? And she looked at me and sighed uh, and said, I already told you it's a hand picking up rocks. <laughs> Again, two, like two, two and a half years old. Yeah, great. So my little artiste. So I, I wrote a poem based on this picture and it was originally uh, featured on my friend uh, Penny Parker Klosterman's blog. Uh, it's called Work. One by one I set the stones neatly in a pile. Though labor's long and aches my bones, its beauty makes me smile. So there's one example. Uh, I also had one that I did with my son, who was a big dinosaur fan. And he had done this one, I think he was about maybe four at the time, I think, maybe four or five. So here's... <laughs> you notice Jurassic World at the top there. These were these were his dinosaurs at the time. So I wrote a poem uh, about all these dinosaurs he had drawn. It's called On the Eve of the Paleogene, which is the, the paleogenic is is what the area era we're living in. This was prior to the dinosaurs all being obliterated. You know, who knows why? Uh, so on the eve of the Paleogene, when the dinosaurs were no more. Dagger teeth, razor claws, sickles on their feet, bony arms, spikes and horns, ravenous for meat. Driven by eternal hunger, that which none could sate, the giants watched their sun grow dim and met their gruesome fate. <laughs> oh, okay, sorry. 
<laughs> but uh, but there you go. There's just a couple of examples. You know, my kids drew the pictures. I wrote the poem to go along with it. Uh, and it's called Ekphrastic Poetry. So it might be a little activity you can do with your kids or the kids can do with each other. Um, and, you know, it might be fun if you've got grandparents, you know, they have a, a, a photo or something. Kids could write the poem and send it off to the grandparents uh, or, or any relatives and uh, might uh, might make a, a fun little gift or something. So there you go. If you have uh, any questions, if you like it, uh, feel free to comment, li like the video, feel free to subscribe. If you want more, there are plenty more here. I continue to make them as I can. I'm I'm trying to write, I'm trying to market, and I'm homeschooling two kids. So <laughs> you, you get the videos when you get the videos. What can I say? I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and be sure to, uh, to follow me if, if you want to. Um, you know, if you don't, I'll never know, but if you want to, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, I'm, I'm pretty much everywhere. MattForest.com, and I will talk to you next time.